What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Flask tutorial video. This is a first video in a sort of batch of Flask videos that I'll be adding to the previous series. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about includes. So it has been a little bit since we last talked about Flask, so just in case you don't have the files, you can go to github.com slash python programming and once you're there you can scroll on down to here, Python programming website, and these are the files you can download the zip, extract it, and move the files up, or you can get and all that fancy stuff. So do whatever you need to do, get the files. You don't necessarily have to use the files. If you've got your own little project and you're just trying to learn alongside your own project and incorporate it, that's cool. You should have no problem following along. So we'll move this over and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, there will be, all the sample code is posted up on pythonprogram.net and we'll actually be referencing, uh, especially in this tutorial series because there's a lot of HTML code and me sitting here and typing out the HTML code and making you type out the HTML code is really stupid. So we're not going to be doing that. So though you'll definitely want to head to the text-based tutorial and grab that code. So these will be kind of a little faster paced as well since we don't have to linger on the HTML. So, you can come here, web dev, and then scroll down, and there'll be new tutorials here as they are released. So, moving on, uh, let's get started. So, first of all, here's our init.py file. Uh, one thing to, to notice right out of the gate is, um, actually, let me close this one and open up again. Uh, let's go here, init.py, is, you know, down here, we've got like all these little mini functions. This was my content management system. My initial thought was that I would have like custom tutorial for every tutorial. Um, but very quickly you get into a sort of habit and because you need to keep things efficient. Uh, so this was a mistake. And uh, the real way to handle this is with dynamic URLs. So as you might be able to guess, that'll be one of the videos in this little batch is doing dynamic URLs to kind of handle for this nonsense. And the other stuff is a mystery. You'll find out as we go. So just go ahead and find a spot. It really doesn't matter where you stuff this. I'm trying to find a good one that I can just copy and paste. Yeah, we'll just do this. So just take one of these functions, basically copy, come down here, paste, and we'll rename this. So this will be, um, we'll call this include example. And then we'll take that same name, put it there. We'll leave the try and accept, no problem. We don't need to garbage collect. Mm -hmm. And now we'll make a new template and we're going to call this one includes tutorial.html. Save that. Come over here, go into templates, new file, and this will be includes h oops. What are we calling this? I already forgot. Includes tutorial.html. All right. So now I've got an empty file here. I'm going to take 404 here. We'll copy that, come over here, paste, and basically clean this up because this is a bit of a mess. We'll leave the div container. We don't need to align anymore. Do that, whoops. Clean, clean, clean that. All right, cool. So now within this div, we're gonna put, um, we'll just have it say hi for now. It doesn't really matter. We're, that'll be changed in a moment. We'll save that. Come over to init. We've got init loading includes tutorial, no problem. So now we'll come over to the shell. And this is what I've been reloading is that, or using to kind of refresh Apache. In the past, I used service Apache to refresh, I think. Uh, but reload goes a lot faster. So I'm pretty sure service Apache to, or no, we were using restart. I knew refresh sounded weird, right? But it, oh, first of all, that failed. Probably had to, probably would have to do a sudo there since I'm not a uh, super user here. But anyway, reload is generally a lot faster. For some reason, restart is, is pretty slow. So reload is usually like instant. Now, this is my little server here. You might be hosting locally or whatever. It's probably best that you dev locally, um, but I just use this server temporarily. So, so here's our server. Um, it basically, it's like an old version of pythonprogramming.net. And we are, our link is include example. So paste that on in there. Sure enough, there's our information. Now, of course, we haven't actually included a thing. Come on, Harrison, worst tutorial ever. So let's go ahead and include some stuff. 
So we'll come back over here. This is actually extending, but it's not including Jack. So to include something, all you change is it is its logic. So it's the curly brace with the percent sign and you include. So you just type include and then in string, you include whatever you want to include. Now like extend and render template, it automatically knows to look in templates, okay? But with includes, generally like right now our templates, we don't have that many templates, but as you build a website, you're gonna find you've got like 60 templates or something, right? And so it makes sense to kind of try to start structuring things. So we're gonna go he here, add a new directory, and I'm gonna call this uh, includes. So all my little HTML snippets, they go in includes. So include, it's already in templates, so all we have to do is includes slash, and then whatever we want to include. Now, um, we're gonna include a comment box, so I'm just gonna call it commentbox.html. Save that. Now, right now, we're gonna obviously get an error because commentbox.html simply does not exist. So let's go ahead and go to includes. We'll just open that up. Nothing here yet. We'll new, file, and commentbox.html empty file and we'll start by let's go ahead and just copy this so um, head to the link and grab the comment box .html, at least the initial one okay and you don't have to even do it really but if you want <laughs> if you want to follow along you probably should do that so here what's happening is we're using logic within here and this is this is actually like a global basically like everyone has access to the session information so this isn't too fancy yet but i'll show you something more impressive about includes in a moment so here's our comment box if the idea here is that if the user is logged in then they should be able to have a little reply box box so they can post a reply if they're not logged in they get a little message that says hmm, you need to log in if you want to post and then cut right so simple enough we'll save that and let's just check that real quick what did i do here it is uh so we can refresh and i'm not currently logged in so it says you have to be logged in to post okay great let's log in now I'm logged in and let me just hit back a couple times and then refresh and boom, we've got a reply box. Awesome. Now, uh, we also had one more thing we wanted. Obviously it was the reply box and replies. So we need some replies. So again, to get some replies, let's head over to um, the sample code basically. And we've got a little dictionary here. Um, let me bring that back. Get back here. All right. Now, in include example, we try the following. Uh, we're going to add this this dictionary here. So this, this is this is just a simple dictionary with these are in theory our users in our posts. Now you would have some sort of SQL query that grabs replies to the specific post, but we don't have anything like that in our database, um, and that's a lot to add for such a simple tutorial. So this is just a quick example. So we take replies, obviously this is a, a, um, a variable that we want to pass, not really to includes tutorial, we want to pass that to comment box, right? So how do we do that? Well, it turns out we don't really need to do that. So whoops, uh, we do replies equals replies, and we go to um, the HTML file here, and now what's happening is we are, this is what it replies is being passed to, but it turns out it's also passed here uh, dynamically. So we can come to comment box and basically after uh, the if statement, because whether or not the user is logged in, we still want to show previous replies. So we would do something like this, like we would say something like, you know, four are in replies and then we can end the four and, f and four. There we go. Uh, we want to have some sort of comment, and this is just a really easy thing. Let's say div class well, and then we'll have a well again. Er, div. <laughs> yeah, so the real reason I don't type HTML is because I suck at it. Uh, and then basically you would have, you've got the reply, so the reply, it's a reply dictionary, right? So it would be replies are is the actual reply itself, and then the replier would just be the R, right? So R, 
and then we'll just have a dash or something. Okay, so that will display for everyone. So we can save that. Now we need to save the init file and then also we need to refresh. Uh, so we do that. Cool. Now head over to here and we will restart or refresh this and bam, we've got all the replies there. So uh, obviously this is just a really quick and simple example. This is a horrible comment and stuff, but the idea is to show you the includes basically. So um, so really that's it. I mean, there's really, the includes is a pretty uh, simple concept to digest. So that should be it. But if you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below. Uh, the next tutorial we're going to be talking about Jinja, more Jinja logic basically. So there's a lot of little subtleties with Jinja that took me a really long time to actually learn all these little subtleties. People don't seem to really talk much about them or explain why they're using them. So I've kind of had to figure that out on my own. So I think that'll be kind of helpful for you guys to cover that. And then we'll begin getting into even more uh, cool stuff. So anyways, questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. And until next time.